Welcome to the report for Tiger Mountain. We're going to talk about Trump train. Yes, it's leaving the station. Beep beep. 2024 has begun. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, Trump is smashing it in the primaries, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, he got off to a flying start in Iowa, and he's uh, winning a lot of the other ones, ladies and gentlemen. So it's a big deal at the moment. The Trump train is well, uh, well on this track, you know. Um, you know, I mean, Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis there, he's two main, um, I guess people who are trying to derail the Trump train, and they're not having much luck, are they, ladies and gentlemen? And uh, Vivek Ramaswari, uh, you know, he was an interesting candidate. He was sort of like, um, you know, he spoke like Trump if he was, a, you know, a, a sort of a 35-year-old Indian bloke, wasn't he? You know, and it was very interesting. And uh, he's come out to endorse Trump, so he's a possible vice president candidate. Um, he is a bit suspicious um, in the sense that, like, he sounded, you know, he talked the talk, uh, but did, could he walk the walk? And he does have ties to the World Economic Forum, which makes me suspicious. I think he was one of their young global leaders. So, um, you know, it, you know, I mean, Donald Trump, I think, uh, is open to flattery. Anybody who agrees with him and, um, you know, uh, says, oh, Trump, everything you say is great. I really love everything you say. He's very open to people like that. And I think that's one of the ways that the globalists... Um, you know, insert people next to him. I imagine someone like Mike Pence, for example, was similar. I really like what you say, Mr. Trump, blah, blah, blah. And then he thought, well, I'll make this guy my running mate. And then for a long time, he was kind of a yes man, a secondary yes man. But then when, the, you know, when, um, when the rubber hit the road, uh, when they needed to, um, you know, question the uh, election results of, of 2020, which were incredibly dodgy, uh, Mike Pence didn't come through. So uh, I would worry that Vivek Ramaswamy, if that is how you pronounce his name, uh, would do something similar. He will be loyal as a number two if Donald Trump decides to go with him. Um, but, you know, he might betray him down the line because we don't know who he is and where he really came from. So that's what I would say there. But I do think uh, it's going to be a very interesting year. I mean, obviously, Biden is doing a terrible job as president of the United States. Uh, I think he's the most unpopular president in the history of the United States. And I think he's the worst president in the history of the United States. Um, obviously, Donald Trump is our favorite president, the best president ever, as anybody who's a contemporary right winger. Uh, I love the way Donald Trump calls himself your, uh, your favorite president. You know, that's, I love the way he calls himself that. And uh, I think he is to many of us. Um, though, it's interesting, the first Donald Trump term, you know, as we all know, it wasn't perfect. He was surrounded by the deep state. He was surrounded by the globalists. And th they used every opportunity opportunity to sabotage some of his plans, but still, I mean, he was a hundred times better than Joe Biden. So I do think there is a strong possibility of Donald Trump getting back in this year. Um, I don't know if the Democrats can change um, horses and drop Biden. I mean, I guess Biden could drop out of the race at any time. And uh, obviously then they bring in someone like Gavin Newsom or, or Michelle Obama, um, and then you'd have a different horse race altogether. But for the moment, uh, it's the Trump train. Uh, Trump's winning primaries. I don't think DeSantis or Haley, who are, who are both terrible in their different ways, can stop him. So we're, we're, he's going to win the nomination and then go up against whoever the Democrats put up against him, whether it's Sleepy Joe. I think I, I don't think they're going to be able to rig it enough unless they suddenly bring in a new pandemic or something. I don't think they're going to be able to rig this election enough, ladies and gentlemen. So I really think we're in for uh, Donald Trump turn two. And even though, again, it might not be perfect, I think he will be a lot tougher than he was the first time. I think he's probably learnt his lessons and he learnt how the deep state has maybe sabotaged him and maybe he will be a lot more what we want. So Donald Trump turn two, here it comes. Yeah, we should also mention the lawfare um, that's been going on against um, you know Donald Trump. Uh, obviously the Biden Justice Administration has been um, weaponizing the Department of Justice to attack Donald Trump with all these completely spurious um, you know uh, cases against him all over America. And also to try and keep him off the ballot. I mean, it's all this is all open election interference. You know, cause Donald Trump accuses the Democrats of election interference and here it is, right there on the the front page of the newspaper every day and yet still mainstream media is still attacking Donald Trump. Obviously the people of America really love Trump so uh, hopefully the people went out and uh, I do agree with what Steve Bannon said about Donald Trump is that you know he is like one or two presidents in the history of the United States in the sense that the entire future of the nation depends on that person. He said the other two people uh, who are like that are George Washington the first president of the United States and Abraham Lincoln, who um, fought the Civil War. And the third, of course, ladies and gentlemen, is Donald J. Trump.